Rob G, are are you uh, going to talk to us about a couple of these deals and and especially uh, the Washington Commanders? Rob G. Yeah, they're out here making some moves, man. Or they're there. But I want him to talk about yeah, some of the moves that were made. Yep, and then uh, uh, people and how the Washington Commanders are the new hotness. They are. Well, they did make the biggest, splashiest uh, trade of the day. Everybody wanted this person. When they acquired Saints Pro Bowl cornerback Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah. You know, the Chiefs were in on him. Allegedly, the Ravens added a a key on him. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, ended up going to Washington. It was a third and a fourth pick and then, um, you know, some pick swaps. So not a a massive price tag. He is going to be a free agent at the end of the year, so it could be a rental. It could be something more. We'll find out later. It's easier, right, to do that, right, because there's no big price tag. But the the reason why the commanders making this deal raised some eyebrows is, number one, because it's the commanders, and it wasn't the Chiefs, it wasn't the Ravens, it wasn't the Bills, it wasn't a team that you would consider a perennial power. The other one being that two days ago, Adam Schefter put out this report for ESPN saying that agents around the league have told him that their players have specifically requested, hey, if you can, trade me, or if you can, help me sign with the Washington Commanders. And what Schefter said in his report was that the biggest reason for this newfound interest in Washington is the play of rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels. No surprise to me. No surprise at all. Um, every now and again, once every, you know, two, three years or so, four years, we get kind of that <clears throat> young quarterback that has a, a run or people see the run coming and they want to run and jump on that train. Um, if you go back to Russell Wilson, right, and what he was able to do early on with the Seahawks, you're kind of like, all right, with that defense, with that quarterback, you can kind of see what's coming. Patrick Mahomes, once he really got the starting job with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs after they moved on from Alex Smith, you see what was going on there. Um, Lamar Jackson, once he kind of got rolling, you kind of know, punch them in for 10 games every year. Just uh, put 10 games. Super Bowl, I don't know. We'll see. Punch them in for 10. And I think people are seeing Jaden Daniels. And that whole new front office or uh, the, the the new ownership, and they're like, man, let me be a part of that because at least it seems every year I have a chance to compete, uh, a chance to be playing for something, a chance to be potentially in the postseason, and then from there you'll see once you get in the tournament. So uh, it may, it doesn't surprise me that people are seeing, and you know, Rod, you know this too, man, they probably got the text messages going on. Hey, man, what is that kid that real deal? Like, whoo. Boy, I'm, let me tell you, these that real deal. And then makes it interesting and intriguing to be a part of. Yeah, I think there's more than that. And I and I do get it. He's the new hotness. And mm-hmm. it's easy to – because quarterbacks get too much credit and too much of the blame. We know that, okay? So I, I, do, I do believe that, that they see a young kid like him that's like last year with C.J. Stroud yeah, and yeah. whatnot. So I get that. But I think it's deeper than that. And I think when you talk about the quarterback – the coaching has to play a fact, too, because it's about winning and it's about changing the culture. Because I could give you quarterbacks that have bad coaches who were supposed to be can't miss. Oh, I, and, yeah, no, okay, I, I feel right? you on that. Like, like Justin Herbert, right? But he had a bad coach in mm-hmm. Brandon Staley. Bad position, right, like a, losing right, games. Right, yeah. like games that you should have won and all kinds of stuff that stopped them from doing what they, what yeah. they probably would have done with such a guy. There used to be polls preseason – where Justin Herbert was ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Oh, for sure. Because they were like, he's 6'5", he's built, he's got a Best strong natural arm. thrower, yeah. Exactly. Trevor Lawrence was can't miss mm-hmm. the best quarterback prospect since Peyton Manning, my God, blah, 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 blah. Bad coach in, in Urban Meyer. Bad situation, bad circumstance. So there is Joe Burrow comes out. Oh, uh, Cincinnati can't win a playoff game. He shows up. And people are, are, are automatically there. Now, they haven't won. They, they got to the, they Super, got Bowl, the Super Bowl, yeah. which is good. They got there. But they haven't won anything yet. So I think there's a degree of that. And Quinn in Washington changing the, the, the culture and the tone has to be a part of that as well. Because even if you look at Jane Daniels, his passing numbers you know, are modest, but it's, it's that he's a dual threat and he can run the football mm-hmm. as well. I think, Rob G., what do we look at? 1,500 yards through the first nine games passing or something mm-hmm. like that 
He's the second quarterback in NFL history through the first eight games of his career, not counting this last Sunday, right. to have 1,500 passing yards and over 400 rushing yards. And, yeah. and, and the rushing yards, you know what I mean? That, that, that's a number that's incredible for it a is. quarterback. Uh, and that's what makes him so dynamic and why people are excited. Uh, I always look at Tom Brady, uh, and people you know, have given Tom Brady way too much credit for the Patriots. They had a top-five defense. Rob G., we did this math, too. Like almost every year, oh, they yeah. won a Super Bowl. No, he was fortunate, uh, right? And 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 there are games, even in like you do the Falcons game, when they had to the come back. The defense almost gave you up score, nothing. But we, they right. didn't score. They, they didn't score. Right. Yeah. And and when they beat the Rams, if you remember that Super Bowl when it, the last one they beat uh-huh. the Rams, uh, held them to three points. Held, they averaged thirty five points that year, yep. Yep. and they got held to a eighty nine yard field goal. Like like that is how dominant. Because if you remember that Super Bowl. Tom Brady had no touchdowns and an, he interception. Had an interception. Yeah, right. That's all he and like and a fumble. I think that is what his day mm-hmm. was. And they even gave the MVP to a wide receiver who didn't even have a touchdown. Yeah. Like that it is was that. It was that kind of game. Remember, it was I think it was thirteen it was, to three. It was right. A, it was an awful game. It was, it was an terrible awful game. game. But but nobody because you can't give. They don't give it to the whole defense or, you know, they don't pick mm-hmm. out one player for one play. So a lot of times the quarterback is the one. But I think coaching is huge I'm, and a I big don't, part I of that. I completely agree. I think, again, I brought up, you know, what? remember the conversation we are having about Michael Vick. Once he finally got with Andy Reid, remember that? What well, we saw the best absolute version of Michael Vick. And we said, man, what could have been had Michael Vick been with Andy Reid and also matured as a person and, and as a player and was willing to grow – if he did that and had an Andy Reid, what would he have been? Alex Smith gets with an Andy Reid. So there's a marriage between a great quarterback uh, and, and Bill Walsh and Joe Montana. You know what I mean? Uh, there's always some marriage. Don Shula and, and Dan Marino. Uh, like we just said, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Um, when don't you get forget, a, when Donovan you, McNabb went to four Donovan McNabb and Andy Reid. championship games, and they went to a Super yep. Bowl. And I'll one. give you another example, and I don't think That's he's why necessarily. That's coaching is, is, is huge. I'm going to add that extra C, too, coaching and culture. That I mean, when you like, if you look at, never have you ever thought someone would say, man, shoot, I want to go play with them Lions. But Dan Campbell has created a culture there where they're hard-nosed, they're gritty, they're gritty, they know who they are, they don't mind going for it, and he's created a culture and he's and empowered his offensive and defensive coordinators. Now you got Jared Goff thriving, and it's like, man, Detroit seems to be a new place. So Jaden Daniels married with Quinn, married with that new ownership, you're starting to create a culture where people expect to win there, they have hopes to win there, and now you got something cooking. Now you're cooking when you can have all those elements uh, and all those ingredients brewing in a pot. Now you're cooking with something, man, and, and that's what people make something special and guys want to jump up and be a part of and say, man, because if I got to play, man, I want to try to be in a situation where I can play meaningful games and compete every day. That's why I don't want to go to the Panthers. New ownership, we hear they're meddling. They don't know what they're doing. They're doing too much. Uh, we don't like the coaches. They're not drafted right. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to go to that. You feel like a destiny. That was Detroit for so many years. You know this. Detroit was a place you would go to retire. Every old player I know at some point is like, yeah, I, I swung by Detroit. Yeah, they had a five-game stint in Detroit. Like, they would just send you there. But now the culture's changed. So you're right. Jaden Daniels, Quinn, and the ownership, that whole trio has got something brewing, too.